Welcome to Oregon Voters Digest, the program that brings forward the social and political issues that are important to people living here in the Pacific Northwest. And now, your host, Bruce Broussard. Welcome again to this segment of the Oregon Voters Digest. I'm Bruce Broussard, your host. Folks, uh, I hope things are well for you. Hey, Christmas is up, getting ready to come up here, the, uh, all of the festivities. We've done a lot of shopping. And, we don't have any money. I mean, there's all kinds of things and whatever. But, but anyway, those are some of the issues that I'm faced with today. But the issue that we're going to talk with today is that we're going to be talking about um, leadership. And, and we're in dire need, if you will, of leadership. Uh, with Chris, is all of the things that have happened of late and that are still happening of late. Um, I think everybody's sort of like waiting for I heard the announcement about everybody's sort of waiting for the for the president to speak at five o'clock today, we're we're live here, and we're going to be doing the show until five. But the fact remains on the whole issue of ISIS and the shootings and things of that nature, and and um, so it's really tough. And but out of that, I thought maybe this is what I would do this time around: is that the whole issue of leadership. We're in need of leaders, and how do we go about getting leadership? In most cases, it's from folks who are going to be filing for office for the various offices. Uh, that are going to be available uh, for not only from the state, not only from a, from a national perspective, as far as the government, for the president, and this, that, and the other. But uh, you know, we we need we are needing folks who understand leadership, government, and there's a, there's a number of areas there that are very serious areas that we need to understand. So I thought what I'd do today with you is that I brought along with me today someone that I've had the opportunity to meet. Uh, Maybe I should have uh, encountered him some time ago when I was running for office, and I felt I had something to say. But unfortunately, he was in the same boat I was in. <laughs> and but, it, but but all of a sudden, and he's won several. He's 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 run, he's been in office. He's run for office. He's he's won some. He's he's lost some. In my area here in the, in the county, Portland area, I've uh, I picked some of the highest office, so I didn't I didn't hit the, some of the grassroots deal. I didn't grow and whatever. But now, for some strange reason, I, I've learned. I've learned. In fact, I'm even thinking about, uh, very seriously thinking about the possibility of running for office here in the Portland metropolitan area, um, because of the fact that I felt that some of the some of the issues that are that are going to be talked about are not, uh, from what I've seen of the candidates. And we've got until we've got until March here for the mayor's race for the city of Portland. I still haven't seen the candidates that are really want to deal with some of the issues, major issues here that are facing us here in the city of Portland. But anyway, but regardless, that will happen to me. But, but anyway, but what I'm going to be doing is that I'm going to be taking some lessons here today, and um, and then hopefully I'm going to take advantage of this person here by maybe attending a conference that he's going to be having. Where he's going to be dotting the eyes where I should have been some time ago. So I'm going to take this opportunity, but I'm going to share with you why this person qualifies, if you will, to give you the kind of background and what your needs are uh, to to be able to take that issue. That you are that you are a major concern, whether you run for office or you don't run for office, you can't have influence. And who I'm talking about right here, I'm talking about a guy named Richard Burke. Rich, Richard, how you doing, bud? I'm doing great. Thanks Good for having man. me on oh, today. Fantastic. I, again, like I said, I had an opportunity to chat with him before the show, and and so I think this is going to be dynamite. I think you're going to like it. And so get your pen and your paper and out and uh, get yourself a cup of coffee. And we're going to be here with him for a whole hour. And, uh, and besides just this time around, like I said, people are still maybe possibly you know, maybe thinking about running for office. Maybe haven't filed yet. But I uh, trust me, trust me. If you get if you get to listen to this program, pick it, pick up this conference. If you're really interested, maybe take some potential staff people with you and whatever. Get on down there with me. Learn the learn the, the dot the i's and cross the and just some of those folks who are just interested in trying to define what politics is all about, uh, what what that is all about, what's what's government of the people by the people, because that's really the bottom line. But now you really get it through this particular conference. So, Rich, why don't we just get right into the business of this piece? Sure. But before we get into that, let's talk a little bit about Rich, you know, your background. Let's talk a little bit about that. Well, talk myself, okay, um, I am Richard Burke. Yeah. I live in Hillsboro. Okay. And I came through Portland University or Portland State University. I graduated in 89, was at Nebraska before that. I'm basically a Midwesterner who's lived here since 87. And your studies, what would what, you? Uh, social you, science, social political science. science. Okay. I did okay. student government, that whole mess. Okay, okay. Right? So and you got the bug there. I got, I got the bug when I was a little kid. <laughs> ah, and, okay. And so, uh, you know, I think the first election I was cognizant of okay. was Nixon McGovern in 72. Okay. Went with my dad to the voting booth okay. and all of that. I worked for Carter 
okay. in 76, kind of did my own thing, a little kid riding on a bicycle, putting up signs, and and uh, I was a Democrat for a while, mm -hmm. uh, but then I, you know, discovered capitalism mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, then became a Republican for a while, and then after a number of other issues, uh, I became a libertarian. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm still a libertarian, ran for governor of Oregon mm -hmm. in 1998. Mm -hmm. I worked in the Oregon legislature as a legislative assistant. Uh, I've run for office at the local level nine times, I've won seven, and currently serve as a commissioner on the Tualatin Valley Water District Board of Commissioners. Uh, I've been a teacher. I worked for Americans for Prosperity for a while. Mm -hmm. I uh, took teacher training at the University of Nebraska. I had my own high school class as a practicum mm -hmm. for a while. I did some teaching in the private sector for uh, Computer Land, a computer company that existed in the 80s. Mm -hmm. I've been a, a, a volunteer debate coach, speech and debate coach at uh, Trillium Charter School here in Portland. Mm -hmm. And I just have that background. So I've kind of carried that with me all mm -hmm. the way into what I do now, yeah. which is work with Western Liberty Network, mm -hmm. a charitable, non, or tax exempt, nonpartisan, mm -hmm. 501c3 educational foundation. Mm -hmm. And what we do is we train grassroots activists how to take responsibility for their own governments or governance in the communities where they live. Mm -hmm. I'd like to chat for a moment Let's what you talk said about, about leadership. That. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think it is a mistake for us to look for somebody to save us, mm. okay? Folks say, we need somebody to come forward. Uh, sometimes, like Ronald Reagan or Bill Clinton or FDR or Abe Lincoln, I think a lot of people are looking for some white knight to come and save us and show us the way. That's not the concept of America at all. We're supposed to be a self-governing society. And so the leadership that we really need is invested in all of us. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, not everyone has a, a great deal of leadership aptitude. Some people have a lot, some people have a little mm -hmm. bit. But if we take charge of our own governance, the leaders will emerge and we'll all be able to engage in some level of leadership mm -hmm. simply by taking part, by participating. I think it's important to uh, decide, or I think it's, I think who we elect as president, mm -hmm. governor, and all these other high offices, I think they're important. We have to pay attention to them. Why is that so? Well, because they have powerful positions. But even if you get all of the people you want in these positions, you're not going to have enduring freedom. If you want enduring freedom, we've got to be concerned about governance at the local level. The water board, the school board, mm -hmm. the city councils, the fire districts. If we can preserve liberty at the local level where the population is informed and engaged, we'll have good leaders and bad leaders at the top, but the foundation of liberty will be, in, will be assured. If we forget about all of that and we only focus on the high offices, we might win them from time to time, but we won't have enduring freedom. Mm -hmm. So we have to learn how to govern ourselves again. And where are we today? Well, I think a lot of power a lot of limited government activists, uh, I think, suffer from the fact that they don't initially think of getting involved in local government. Right. They they are more inclined to get involved in small business. They're more inclined to focus on their on their families, and other pursuits. People who support limited government don't generally think it's a lot of fun to do a hitch on the water board or the fire board. I think culturally, people on the left are a lot more predisposed to do it. If you take a look at the local elections and see who's running, who's running, who's running, you'll find a lot of liberals mm -hmm. you know, dominating the local ballots, even out in rural parts of the state, mm -hmm. and people who support limited government, you'll see in much fewer, you know, much lower numbers. Mm -hmm. And so I think that if limited government activists want to sort of promote their ideas and their principles, you can't just wait for somebody to show up and offer to save you. You've got to get involved yeah, yourself. Get involved, yeah. It's all about responsibility. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Responsibility is the touchstone of Western Liberty Network. And what we do is we train people how to run for local nonpartisan office, not everyone wants to do that, so we train people how to manage campaigns for local nonpartisan office. 
for those who don't want to do that, we train them how to be good foot soldiers mm -hmm. in campaigns for mm -hmm. office. Mm -hmm. And we also offer training to people who get elected mm -hmm. so they know how to function once they're there. Mm -hmm. Between 2013 and 2015, Western Liberty Network has trained over 200 candidates to run for local nonpartisan office. Okay. And over 80% of them got elected. Mm, give me some samplings. Uh, where, where about? One of the, uh, there are two of them uh, on the Hillsboro School Board that are okay. Western Liberty Network training. Mike Nearman, state legislator, Nearman. Okay. Uh, he um, got his first exposure at our 2011 conference. Uh, Linda Hamilton, Linda Hamilton got elected to Lane County ESD. Okay. Uh, board of Commissioners. There are just a whole bunch of them, all the way down to Mosquito Control mm -hmm. Board, Cemetery Control Board. So, so I'll be the first in the Portland area. Is that what you think? Uh, there are people in the Portland area. Give I don't have the, I don't have the name. names. I don't have the names memorized. So, you don't. That's but, you uh, me. but I'll tell you what I can do. I can send you the list of them. Oh, okay. Right, and right, right, right. Uh, it's, um, but there are, there are people all over the state. And the reason why there are people who have been trained all over the state mm -hmm. is because of our organizational model. Okay. Okay. We don't have subordinate chapters. There's no such thing as a Western Liberty Network chapter. Okay. But we'll go to an existing organization, like maybe the Crook County Tea Party, or you know, Lane County 912, or Milton Freewater Tea Party. Mm -hmm. We'll go to them, and we will offer them the opportunity to affiliate with Western Liberty Network. Mm -hmm. And there's a written agreement which says, we will provide training free of charge at your regular meetings, if in exchange, you will make your rank and file members aware of Western Liberty okay, Network training opportunities yeah. and designate two people to come to an annual leadership conference and participate in periodic conference calls. At the conference, we train people how to do things. We hope that the leaders will come, bring these skills back. Right. Okay, and during the conference calls, we talk about what's going on. We share stories. Mm -hmm. We share best practices. But all of the affiliates, and there are 19 of them in Oregon now and four in Washington, mm -hmm. all of these affiliates are completely independent organizations. Mm -hmm. We can't tell them who their leaders are, what their policies are, or what to work on. Mm -hmm. And in turn, they don't have any say over what Western Liberty Network does. Mm -hmm. We're very much like a coffee service that goes door to door to businesses in an office mm -hmm. building. Say, I have some coffee here. Would you like it? Mm -hmm. And they can say yes yeah. or no. Yeah. So... In this way, the affiliates have complete freedom to do what they want to do politically. Mm -hmm. Western Liberty Network, we focus on training, and it is all we do all the time. And to make this work, you've got to permeate mm -hmm. throughout the mm -hmm. entire state, mm -hmm. and you've got to be persistent mm -hmm. all of the time. Well, you know, and that was one of the things that I was interested in, one of the reasons why we're here today, because normally they're closing the, let's say, I'm, I'm just taking this particular, sure. the, the mayor's race and other races mm -hmm. come March. And you know, uh, my first my first point that came to my mind was that, well, wait a minute, why is he doing this now? You got me, as opposed to after everyone has filed. I'm, I'm just thinking about the electorate aspect. Right, right, right. But then it makes sense because a lot of times if you're just grassroots and you don't really, you've got an idea, you want to run, you think you, hey, you've really got something to say, but mm -hmm. you don't have the organization, if you will. You may not have the money, this, the money of this, that, and the other. But but the way you came across to me and the way it came across is as if. You don't necessarily, there, there are other tools you can use, and, and, and at the same time, maybe you shouldn't be running for that particular office. Maybe you should maybe look entertain the other idea, and this makes more sense. Sure. How to go out and how to basically take that idea of yours and identify it with a, 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 another area, if you will, yep. that makes more sense. We have a training, right? we, right? we, yes, we have a training that centers on nothing but assessing oneself good. as a candidate. Good, good, good point. And you put down, you know, five things that will be used against you right. in a campaign, right. five things that will work for you. Here are the people that will help you get elected. Here are the people that will stop you from becoming elected. Yeah. Yeah. You know, And so if you write down, oh, was convicted of a five-state killing spree, mm -hmm. you know, you're going to reflect on it and maybe mm -hmm. think it's not a great idea to run for Congress, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so what this form does is when you fill it out, when you're done, it's not a campaign plan, mm -hmm. but it gives you an outline of how much help you might expect, mm -hmm. what your personal assets and mm -hmm. deficits are, mm -hmm. all of these different things, and then it gives you a chance to reflect and decide what is realistic. Mm -hmm. Okay, if you want to go out and make 
a point and that's all you want to do, mm -hmm. well, you okay. You do that through another campaign or something. Yeah, but if you want to run for a, an office and actually get elected, right. I've seen people take this form and say, oh, I think I was thinking about running for Congress, yeah. but instead I think I'm, I'm going to run for my park and rec board. Mm -hmm. And that is a very useful tool. Mm -hmm. It gets them to the point where they run for something that they have a chance to win, mm -hmm. they have a chance to do, and they can start building skills. Mm -hmm. And when people get into office, they're not just building skills, they're building networks. Mm -hmm. They're finding people like themselves who want to do good things, who mm -hmm. want to limit government or, or advance the principles of limited government. Mm -hmm. uh, they're able to interact with other people and you know, find volunteers, find donors, mm -hmm. all of these sorts mm -hmm. of things. And the thought is that the people who get trained and get elected they come from these activist groups who have their back when they're in the minority, yeah. but also hold their heat to the fire mm -hmm. if they start to backslide, mm -hmm. you see. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, Western Liberty Network, we don't take a position for or against mm -hmm. any candidate, party, bill, ballot measure. We just train as many people as we can. Mm -hmm. Now, I've talked a lot about limited government activists. Anyone's welcome to take this training. Yeah, yeah. If you're a Green yeah. Party member, you can take this training, and it will be useful to you. Well, in all due respect, I, I noticed your background such. You really have, have developed in, into a, a nonpartisan mindset, if you understand what I'm saying. Well, it is. And, that, and that's good, because in all due respect, then I can relate. You know, you're not, sure. you're not just saying, boom, I'm, I'll, I'll, train, I'll train this guy a little bit more than I would this guy. You know what I'm saying? Well, no, I, don't, I, I train it. Mind, everybody everybody who comes to a WLN training event gets right. the same treatment. Good. The other point I want to make in regards to why I was at someone excited But, but one, one thing, Bruce. Well, you got another piece is that Is that limited government activists don't have a lot of places to go for this kind of training. I know they don't the have The left any. has tons of them. No, that's why. No, no. And so that's why they, they typically don't come to us. No, that, but if they come, they're going to get the same right, quality right, training right. that everybody well, else gets. Well, the, the other thing that I thought was, was missing uh, that you sort of like uh, gave me some insight in that when one files to run for office, mm -hmm. the application process doesn't tell you this stuff. That's right. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. You just go in there, and in some cases, then all of a sudden you, you file, and okay, now here I am. I'm exposed to everything. Media's calling me. I don't know what to do, what That's to right. say. Uh, if not that, I, depending upon what media I go to, uh, gee, you're just a buffoon, or you just sure. this, or you this, and that, and the other. What I'm hearing here, what I'm hearing, what I'm feeling is if is that by attending a conference of this nature, I can one de determine one, am I ready to run for office? Yes. You know, and do I have some good points? Uh, two, can I join another campaign with these ideas, mm -hmm. and how can I do that aspect of it? Three, how can I get myself a team if, in fact, I still want to run for office? That's right. And four, if I don't necessarily have all of the big monies, but I still have a good idea and it really hits hard aspect of it, there are ways that one might be able to still do that effectively and prepare themselves for the next round or something to that effect. Well, Fair? we have, yeah, we have training units, for example, on, on how to interact with the media. Okay, good. How to interact with volunteers, mm -hmm. um, how to write a campaign plan and build a campaign team, mm -hmm. how to raise your first $2,500. Mm -hmm. uh, there is just unit after unit of, of skills. And th these are not uh, skills that are brand new. I didn't invent them, but yeah. they're, they're, they're skills that people need to have if they want to be and a candidate. Experience. And your experience. And, and, and you, my you, experience. You, you learn, yeah. I don't claim to be a political genius, but I've been yeah. around the block a few I, times. I understand that. I've had people shoot arrows in my back, yes, and I've yes, had supporters yes, yes. and all these other things. So Some this is the way I can... With him too. What's that? Some are still are with me, too. You know. That's right. <laughs> and that's good. And, and, and you Keeps know, we, you going. we bring people in yeah. to do training who have been around the block too. I don't provide all of the training. Right. For example, at this conference, we've got former state legislators, yeah. office holders, professional political consultants, professional speech coaches. All of these kinds of people will be personally providing the training mm -hmm. at this conference. And I sometimes ask these people to provide training in the field. Mm -hmm. If I get a phone call from Crook County Tea Party and they mm -hmm. want to learn a particular skill, I'll either provide the training or provide someone who's better mm -hmm. at providing that particular training. Mm -hmm. And uh, the last time that they ran candidates, I think they elected seven people mm -hmm. to local nonpartisan office out of that one group. Mm -hmm. And you know, this helps the groups grow too, because if you're, if you're a group and you've got you know, 18 people showing up every month at a meeting, and all right. of a sudden seven of them get elected to local office, yeah. Pretty soon, 
it's easier to get more people to show up because mm -hmm. this is where decision makers mm -hmm. are. You can get a newspaper to, to report on what the group mm -hmm. does. Mm -hmm. It builds political relevance, mm -hmm. and then the group is able to grow. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and it's not about Western Liberty Network or any one group. It's about reweaving the fabric of our political culture one thread at a time and building a culture of civic involvement, mm -hmm. a culture that has been allowed to decay mm -hmm. over many mm -hmm. decades. Mm -hmm. That's what this is about. No, then another area, we're going to go around and around, but that's good. I'm going to hear you because I'm wanting the viewing audience to really understand where I'm coming from. Uh, this is a participation of everybody, from the voting person to the person who's running for office, all mm -hmm. right across the board. Aspect that's right. And, um, and I just want to make sure that they, they got this yep. aspect of it. I, I'm thinking... And the other thing, one of the things you made sense, the fact that you're going to have uh, several other races debating, if you will. That's you, right. You made mention. You might want to mention those. Sure. Um, this is not just for people who want to be candidates or campaign managers. This is for people who want to be informed on what's going on. Yeah, yeah. So throughout the day, I don't know if this has ever been done before. Right. Yeah. During the, our morning, lunch, and afternoon assemblies, mm -hmm. we will be having candidate debates for United States Senate. Right. Secretary of State right. and Oregon Governor. Uh, you hit all three. And uh, we're inviting Democrats and uh, you know if there are other parties to participate yeah. Yeah. in 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 this debate. But all of the uh, prominent Republicans have already confirmed for this event. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be a newsworthy mm -hmm. event. Uh, it's going to be an informative event, mm -hmm. and it's going to be an educational event. Mm -hmm. The 16 breakout training sessions teaching the skills we've discussed mm -hmm. here will be held between the debates. Mm -hmm. And so this is going to be, uh, I, I regard it, and I believe it is fair to say that this is going to be the premier grassroots training event of the year. That's neat. That's neat. And it's going to be right in front, a good kickoff. People uh, will come out inspired, informed, and energized, mm -hmm. and ready to take on the next cycle. Now, the races that you were talking about, as far as debates are concerned, uh, what about those individuals that might be looking at what we're doing and talking about right now and say, hey, look, I'm going to be running for governor. I haven't filed yet, mm -hmm. but I won't be filing until maybe in January or whatever. Or if I if I go out and file today, will I be given the opportunity, if you will, to be a part of that what, if I'm running for our cut off, our cut off day our cut off okay. date is december 31st december 31st they need mm -hmm. to, they need to know right. that december yeah. 31st mm -hmm. that's right and right now any has anyone signed up to date at this point in time? oh lots of people have yeah. uh, what for, about the senatorial and what race are you talking about uh for the united states well, senate who, and who's who's the incumbent um dan or the um the, the incumbent is ron wyden ron wyden okay. yeah ron very wyden. tough to beat and okay. ron wyden will, will be invited he will be invited of, of course but okay. uh both of the republicans have already said that they're they're going to be Who there. Are two Republicans. Any, uh, any, Dan, Dan Lashelber. Okay. And another one uh, who has not yet confirmed is Faye Stewart, a commissioner okay. out of um, Lane, okay. uh, Lane County. Okay. For governor, Dennis Richardson has confirmed. Bob Niemeyer has confirmed. Um, for uh, secretary, or excuse me, that's no, for that's secretary just, yeah. of state. That's secretary of state. Secretary of state, you know, and uh, for Oregon governor, Bud, you know, Pierce. You're right. It has uh, Sid Lichen back at secretary of state. He's mm -hmm. confirmed. I mean, everyone's going to be. All there. these folks have filed. Uh, they've all filed. They've all filed for they've all office. Filed. Okay. And they've got PACs. They're raising money. They're okay. doing all of that. Okay. Now, some of them are even on TV already. Okay. Okay. Yes. I've, I've um, seen Pearson. You know, the thing about these debates, this is going to be a situation where everyone who attends will have the opportunity to write a question. Mm -hmm. The questions will be put into a fishbowl, and mm -hmm. we'll have professional moderators who uh, will pick up what they think are good questions from okay. the audience so be and a, ask So them. the candidates will be able to put their ideas, uh, their issues, yep. into this bowl, right? Yep, that's and right. You just pull them out. Yep, good, and good. so anyone who attends can can do that. Okay. Also, people will be given a sheet to evaluate cool. the event. Yeah. We're not going to declare a winner or loser mm -hmm. or anything like mm -hmm. that, but everyone individually mm -hmm. will be able to score the mm -hmm. debate. Mm -hmm. Who's there? Mm -hmm. It's it's going to be a really mm -hmm. exciting event. We did this in 2014. Okay. For United States Senate, and mm -hmm. Jason Conger, Monica oh. Webby was mm -hmm. there, yeah. and Mark okay. Callahan. Good. Mark Callahan's going to be at this Mark's one. Be there too. He's okay. going to be there too. Yeah, Mark's and uh, it was and, and Jory Perkins was there yeah. in 2014. Okay. 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 And and Lars Larson was the debate yeah, well, moderator. Lars, well, Lars was there, yeah. Yeah, I mean, this was a fun event. Everybody had a good time. And the night before the January 30th conference at the conference hotel, which is the Embassy Suites in Tanis Okay, okay. Uh, we have a free reception with hot appetizers and live jazz music. And it's a great mm -hmm. mixer. It breaks mm -hmm. the ice. So the next morning, mm -hmm. people have met each other. Mm -hmm. And uh, so... Um, you know, it's. Do you mind if I tell them how they can find out about it? Yeah, 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 yeah. We we, okay. we, we do this throughout the game. Yeah. 
Okay, um, the there. website is westernlibertynetwork.org, mm -hmm. and it's all one word, westernlibertynetwork.org, and there's a button there that says register now, and there you can you know, you can secure your registration, and mm -hmm. if you need lodging, you can get lodging there too mm -hmm. at okay. a discounted block rate, and um, there's also, if, if you can't go or if you just want to support the event, there's a uh, sponsorship button where okay. people can secure sponsorships okay. but folks will be able to download an entire agenda looks just like this here okay. they'll yeah. be able to see a complete agenda yeah, of, of the event like the, uh, and they'll also be able to download study materials because mm -hmm. at the event we will have uh, the chance to take the examination to enter the National Association of Parliamentarians mm. and this is about you know rules of order, how to run a meeting, how to participate in a meeting, mm -hmm. how to follow a meeting mm -hmm. that's run by Robert's Rules of Order. Mm -hmm. The study materials are on the website, and if you take the test uh, at the conference and pass it, you'll be eligible to be a member of National Association of Parliamentarians. Mm -hmm. And that's something you can put on a resume. Mm -hmm. And that's something that gives you a qualification if you do decide to run for office, mm -hmm. or if you're going into business, or anything else where they run meetings. This is an incredible skill. Mm, mm. So this is not just something for political it's skills. A one -stop it's something deal. for life Across skills. Across the board. Oh, That's right. I like it. I like it. So, so if, for instance, any futures or whatever, if, if later on, one can call back and say if, if in fact, they are a member. I'm can sorry? They, if, they, if, they, if, if they are a member of the organization, they can call you back for other pointers or questions of whatever after the... After well, the they can contact the... Na I mean, um, they can contact the National Association of Parliamentarians. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. They're based in St. Louis. Okay. Uh, it's a national registry and kind of the depository of... Well, why is that so, why is that so important? I mean, a lot of folks don't realize it, that, is, that, beca that becomes part and parcel of if, in fact, you're going to be running for office. Well, let's, why, let's, why? Say, let's, let's say, about that. let's say you're going to run for office, or even if you're not going to run for office, okay. you're an activist who okay. attends and monitors public boards. Right, okay. Okay, if they uh -huh. do things like they say, uh, Mr. Chair or Madam Chair, I move to divide the question. Yeah. Uh, those in favor say aye. Okay, the question is divided. Here, item one, do debate. I mean, this the, the, the parliamentary procedure th um, used by most public boards mm -hmm. and corporate boards and mm -hmm. a lot of other civic organizations mm -hmm. you need to be able to follow it if you want to know what's going on in a meeting you certainly need to know it if you're participating in a meeting and you don't want to get railroaded and obviously if you're going to run a meeting you have to know how to do it mm -hmm. a lot of people think it's mysterious it's not uh, in fact on the website there is a list of 300 questions and answers that you can download the exam is made up of 100 questions pulled from that pool. Mm. So if you study those 300 questions and answers that are provided, you can't fail the test. Mm. Okay? And there's other materials there. And you will know the basics of Robert's Rules of Order. And then it's just a question of, you know, watching it either, you know, on public access when right, they right, cover public right, boards right, right. or participating in a meeting mm. you know if you're in a student government if you're in the an, in an optimist club mm -hmm. if uh you're in uh you know a lot of any civic a lot of civic organizations use it mm -hmm. you will find that you will be able to have a much greater impact if you have that particular skill mm -hmm. I, I know it's boring people go oh, robert's rules of order you know yeah, it, it can be a little dry yeah, yeah. but but it's one of those things like motor oil isn't mm -hmm. terribly exciting, mm -hmm. but without it, your car is going to mm -hmm. blow up. Mm -hmm. right? and, and I'm liking the way you're doing it because, uh, again, like you said, it may be a first, if you will, putting all this in one shot. Mm -hmm. But it, but it's so important at this point in time. I mean, you've got so many frustrated people from the grassroots, from the person who's just participating in campaign, from the person who and there's going to be more people wanting to run for office. Yes. And you know what I mean? look what's happening out there. There is fear. Now, yeah. some of that fear oh, yeah. is because of, you know, ISIS and yeah, and yeah. Uh, all of the violence that's going on in the world that breeds one particular kind of fear, but another particular kind of fear is expressed in the fact that we're supposed to be, as you said, a nation of, by, and for the people. Right, right. But more and more folks across the political spectrum are beginning to feel like they don't matter anymore. Mm -hmm. That it's not mm -hmm. for. Mm -hmm. of or by the people right, that there right, are these right, forces right, yeah, that yeah. are turning us into pawns yeah. and that we have less and less control over our own destinies we're being compelled to do more and more things and 
they don't know how to come to grips with this I tell you what monster once you hold that point we're going to expand on that we're going to sure. spend more time on that piece we'll take a short break we'll be right back with richard western liberty network don't forget that folks we'll be right back You are watching Oregon Voters Digest. This program can be seen again on these channels on these dates and times. Tell a friend. I am back, and boy, I tell you, I'm really excited about this because, you know, in all due respect, I, I, got, I got to think about myself. I think about myself in terms of the times that I've run for office, mm -hmm. but it's, it was almost like OJT, on-the-job training, so to speak. I mean, I, I had the energy and this, that, and the other. I, I had the, I thought I had the insight, the whole nine yards, but I, I couldn't get any take on it. I, I didn't have anybody engaging me for mm -hmm. a change. And then after after the elections were over and whatever, it seems the folks picked up some of the ideas, but they couldn't take them down to the down the road because guess what, they weren't me. Yeah. And they had other other areas and whatever. So what what we've done over the last thirty minutes, folks, the first thirty minutes, uh, I've been sp spending some time here with Scott and we're talking about Western Liberty Network and what he offers here. But naturally, I'm I'm particularly more interested in the political side of it, and actually running for office aspect of it. But now, I, I, you know, again, as I've talked with him, there are other benefits, if you will, that one can attain by going to this conference that one can use in the everyday. I'm a small business person. Sure. And as you, as you said, I go to meetings, and, and sometimes anybody for that matter, the average layperson goes to a meeting, and, and if you don't understand sometimes parliamentary procedures, somebody mm -hmm. cuts you off with this, that, and the other, you don't know how to react to that cut off or get back to the table, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so it's a very, very important tool I know now that I, I, I know now, but I didn't know at the time. Well, that, that applies that to other system. skills here too, like how to deal with volunteers. Yeah, okay. Okay, that's something that you can use in business if you have right. employees, Right. okay, or if you have a non-political volunteer project. Right. How to write a campaign plan, that can be translated okay. into generic project planning. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this conference, this is not the first this time we've done a, this. This yeah. is the fifth conference wow. that we've held. Mm -hmm. So we've got it down pretty good now. Mm -hmm. uh, the timing, we know to have 10 minute breaks between sessions. Mm -hmm. We know how to, I mean, so everybody's comfortable and has a chance to mm -hmm. process what mm -hmm. they learn, but we're able to throw a lot of information over to them. Mm -hmm. There's a good lunch, there's always a really you know, good lunch, so we make mm -hmm. sure that people are fed. Mm -hmm. uh, and the the feeling is just crackling mm -hmm. with energy mm -hmm. when you're at one of these events. Mm -hmm. And so it's it's offering folks a chance to learn skills not only that are indispensable mm -hmm. for any aspect of of political activity, mm -hmm. but also translatable into people's everyday lives. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like you said, everyday life like fear. Like we just, as we as we took a break. Well coming to grips with it by learning it. how yes, to you know, yes. if you're afraid that you're losing control of your government. Yeah. You know, if like out in rural Oregon, a lot of folks are being told by distant um, organizations and entities, you know, what they can do with their land, where they can build fences, where they can't build fences and where they can cut down trees or fish or I mean that they, in many cases, have to learn on the fly mm -hmm. who to talk to, who who are the responsible parties, how to engage. Mm -hmm. This is where you learn those skills. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they're just as useful for people on the left as they are for people on the right. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's civics. Yeah. It's the kind yeah. of civics that we should be teaching in high school and college, but we aren't anymore. But, you know, what you're hearing now out in, the, in as far as... What we are, what we are being, and it's been, been, uh, been introduced to. Like I said, the, the president's going to be talking at, mm -hmm. at five today, live, if you will, trying to deal with this whole issue of ISIS and what happened here within this country. And people, are, what, what do I do? And uh, well, gee whiz, I better get, go out there and buy myself a gun. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean, I mean that's that's, yeah. that's a big push now. 
Sure. We shouldn't be like that. We, we shouldn't be that. So I, I, I guess my point is well, that. Well, I don't have a problem with people going out and buying oh, guns. Yeah, uh, second amendment, right? I understand that. But, but, it, but, but you know, I, <clears throat> having been in the Corps for 10 years, you know what I mean? Yeah. I know how to utilize it. Sure. I, I, know, I know what it is and how to respect that piece. Yes. But I, I, the concern I have are those individuals that, in all due respect, why are they getting the gun? You, you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a tough issue right now. One person said, uh, I was watching TV, don't remember where, but they said, I've always hated guns. I've never owned a gun. Yeah. I've always been an advocate yeah. of gun control, but now I don't feel like the, gun, the government can protect me anymore, and yeah. that's why I went and yeah, bought a gun. Exactly. We've got people starting to talk like yeah, exactly. that. Exactly, yes. Okay? And that's not good. And they don't trust the government to do its job, mm -hmm. the job that it's supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. I think the long-term solution is once again for us mm -hmm. to take responsibility yeah. in our communities yeah. for our own governance. Mm -hmm. If we do that, then we'll be able to shape our communities, which mm -hmm. will make them inherently safer. Mm -hmm. And fewer people will have the kind of fear that goes out and compels them mm -hmm. to buy a gun. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I agree with you. I mean, I'm not, yeehaw, everyone well, get a gun. You need to have training and you need to know what to do. Exactly. And you need to respect the peace. Exactly. And you know, I, I'll throw this on the table, too, which is another issue, the whole issue of race. Yeah. You know, that's the other thing about fear. That's 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 on the table now. Folks sure. are kind of like, wow, you know, people are looking at one another strange now. We're not we're not Americans anymore, you know. That's we're, right. We're, 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 we're individual tribes, you know. I'm mm -hmm. here and I'm here. You know, we got about, what, about 85 or 90 different tribes here. But initially, we are Americans, and that's what we work. That's why we're so powerful. That's why we're so strong. But that, but that, if, if all of a sudden, if we break that, break that bond, if right. you will, then we, we're not going to be America. But the more of us who have taken responsibility for our governance yes, okay. and get involved with civic life, mm -hmm. the more connections that there will be mm -hmm. between us. Mm -hmm. This is something that can bring people together. Mm -hmm. On the Tualatin Valley Water District uh, Board of Commissioners. I work with a city of Beaverton employee, a retired engineer um, who's very liberal, you know, Prius, bicycle, everything, another mm -hmm. retired engineer who's very conservative, mm -hmm. and a Washington Democratic Party um, activist. Mm -hmm. We're all very different. Mm -hmm. We would never connect with each other mm -hmm. if we were not on this board. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, we don't agree on things, mm -hmm. but we've learned to respect each other and listen to each other. Mm -hmm. We don't have fights. We work things out. We right. talk to each other. Right. We have lunch. Right. And if you take this and multiply it throughout our communities, you're going to find that we have governance that is by the people, of the people and for the people, but we are building the connections mm -hmm. that work against the kind of tribal thinking that you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Uh, the us and them, everybody's polarized, everybody's enemy. Mm -hmm. Get them to engage. Mm -hmm. And then you find that they get engaged in, in other ways, too. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, folks, as you can see, I'm, I'm just going all over the spectrum here with this gentleman. Uh, he really qualifies. He really qualifies to to really give you some insight in terms of, um, uh, of issues, in terms of participating, in terms of, of respect. Um, I mean, I, I can just go on and on and on. But um, I've been doing this uh, with him, such that to, to get, give you a better feel of what to be, what to expect, when in fact you, if you should attend this conference, and I would, I would suggest very strongly that you, I'm going to be there, and I think it's going to, it's, it's something that that's going to help me out. Yeah, if you if you go Friday night, you can expect uh, live music, hot appetizers, and good company. Oh, yeah. uh, if you go the following day, you can expect a lot of really nice people. Uh, mm -hmm. A lot of activity taking mm -hmm. place at a pretty good mm -hmm. pace, mm -hmm. a lot of information, uh, and a lot of inspiration. And that's, that's the point I'm in, in the information piece. Mm -hmm. But again, it gives a little tidbits to the folks who are watching us here and give you a better feel of whatever. And he's been able to answer all the questions. Well, we, let's talk about some terminologies. Sure. Maybe you can kind of spend a little time with it. For instance, what's the, you know, let's define... Uh, let's define conservatives and liberty. Uh, li uh, liberals. 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 It's a complicated. What's the difference? The two. It's a complicated question, what's Bruce. What, what's your, what's your, give me, give me a version. Well, what's you know, a conservative? Who's a what's a conservative? I guess the textbook what's definition is a, a conservative is somebody who wants to keep things as they are to conserve the status quo. Now, liberal is really complicated. The status quo. 
meaning whatever it is i mean if 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 your community has a particular tradition and you don't okay. want it changed okay. you would tend to be regarded as being conservative on that okay. issue okay okay now liberal liberal used to mean something very different you know the the they no now change. use the term classical liberal okay and probably someone who who uh, is a classical liberal um believes in you know individualism and that government should be small on both the social side and on the fiscal side but the meaning of the word liberal has kind of gotten twisted over the years so now it i guess in a very general colloquial sense means big government mm -hmm. uh particularly in fiscal life and mm -hmm. uh th this conservative liberal spectrum is actually quite restraining mm -hmm. because there are people who have some views that are liberal and some views that are conservative mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, that's how you you know define if you're a maybe a liberal or a conservative or an authoritarian or a libertarian mm, okay because uh, okay. there are two axes social what, what, what economic about what about those other two the, the libertarian can, well this is all part of the ideological universe of of what people believe well that's a heavy deal there you, you, you break that down for me <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah i mean like you know philosophically i'm a libertarian i'm okay. almost a I'm all also right. personally a registered libertarian right. voter, all right. and my views tend to be very conservative on fiscal issues. Okay, you know, but I'm also very tolerant on social issues. Oh, okay, I don't want to use the force of government to tell other people how to live, and I don't want to use the force of government to, uh, you know, spend other people's money. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's important that we try to keep government as small as possible. Uh, just my personal philosophy. I think that looking to government to solve a particular problem is the least imaginative solution somebody can have. Because, mm. think about it, government's not going anywhere. It's, it's not going to disappear, poof. Let's it's always, it's yeah. always there. So why not start at the other end and mm. say, is this something the individual should be responsible for? Mm -hmm. Well, if it's, if it's not, if it's too big, then, well, what about the family? You know, what about the neighborhood? You know, what about the non-governmental charitable organizations and churches what about what about the business community i mean you can go to all of these things and then if nothing else works one issue where that might be true is like the defense of the nation in case of invasion mm -hmm. you know uh then okay let's use government but since it's always there it's not an imaginative place to go okay. there's nothing to be lost by starting here and then working up as as is necessary mm -hmm. but many people want to start here because government basically is force. Okay, okay. And okay. they have to be pulled kicking and screaming sometimes to okay. the less coercive mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. And I say, why? It's not going anywhere. It's always there if we need it. Let's start, let's start over here. Mm -hmm. uh, that's my personal okay, political yeah, that's, philosophy. That's fine, that's fine, but, but it, gives a, it gives you a feel that you can have those kind of discussions at this forum. That's right. But, I, but I, want to strain, I want to stress, once again, that Western Liberty Network does not... You know, this is just Richard Burke, the person right, right, talking. Right, right, Western right. Liberty Network right, 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 doesn't right, take a position right, on party that's, or that's or issues, legislation, I, I candidates. That. Yeah. You know, the other thing too, I've thrown out to you, and you, you and uh, tell me whether or not you you feel comfortable with that. Actually, a conservative is not. Uh, there's no such thing as a purist conservative, because at times they can have liberal thoughts too. Well, right? Yeah, that's right. There are uh, many. Not stripes. necessarily have, you have to be a, just a libertarian to be a conservative to, to do that in a change. Right? Yeah, I don't think anyone, or I've never met anyone who is purely anything. Okay. Uh, and you know, I'm not sure that any ideology. Uh, I don't. I'm not sure it would be desirable if any ideology could conceivably that's be 100 percent really implemented. Most, that's most Americans, right? You're right. I'd that's right. <laughs> I mean, you know, regardless of what party a person might belong right, to, right. they probably don't agree with 100 percent of everything right, that's right. on that party's right. platform. And right. thank goodness for that, yeah, yeah. because it means that people are thinking, right, right, or at right. least I hope they're thinking. Right, right. And that is really the cornerstone or the touchstone of self-governance: is right. that people are able to think. And if they can think, they can take responsibility. Mm -hmm. and, and so I always want to come back to the idea of taking responsibility for our own governance. Right. That's a personal challenge to each of us. Mm -hmm. Well, all of us, for that matter. That's right. 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 And when I think about, when I think about the, the, the newly independent party yes. now, right? Mm -hmm. you know I mean? Where folks were either Democrats or independents, uh, uh, Democrats, Republicans, Libertarian, Constitutional, or whatever, but now they want to go with the independent as opposed to saying, okay, fine. Hey, why don't I just go on and make the change where I, where I, wherever I am? Mm -hmm. Fair? Mm -hmm. Right? He just ran. 
and then and I got the feeling as if to say that, you know, maybe through this kind of a conference, through through this communication piece aspect of it, it gave me a clear understanding of what I what I can do if I've got some strong thought and I'm already sitting here, whether mm -hmm. it be in the Republican Party, Democratic Party, or Libertarian Party, mm -hmm. I don't have to change. I just go on and change where I'm at. Well, that's that's one possible that's an strategy. It's yeah, an option that people can yeah. use. Yeah. yeah, I think I think that what people want in somebody to you know, if they're an array of candidates to vote for, I think what they want are people that they can relate to, that they trust. Mm -hmm. um, Ronald Reagan, when he ran for president in 1980, most Americans didn't agree with a lot of his positions, but they voted for him because they related, or he related to them, he spoke to something in them, and they trusted him. You know, somebody would basically say, you know, I, I, I don't agree with him on a lot of stuff, but I like him. Mm -hmm. That's where that comes from. Now, mm -hmm. Barack Obama, go to 2008, mm -hmm. okay? His big thing was hope and change. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? It means everything and nothing. It means something different to every single person. Mm -hmm. It was fantastic marketing mm -hmm. because people could think hope and change and decide what it meant to them, and, of course, it would mean something good. And, and you know, with his presentation style at that time, he was very inspiring. And there were a lot of people that didn't necessarily agree with him that voted for him because he was able to touch something in their heart. Mm -hmm. What I want people to do is look for that spark, but look for it within themselves. To find it within themselves. Don't look for it in Ronald Reagan. Don't look for it in Barack Obama. If you see it, great. If you respond to it, great. But don't look for it there. Look for it in yourself. Mm -hmm. And with that spark, engage, get involved, and take responsibility for something to build your community, not, not for the community's sake necessarily, but for the sake of your family and yourself. And, and a better community will be an incidental result of that. Mm -hmm. But the person has to know, how, do one, how does one go about defining that spark? And <laughs> you can discover that by gaining skills okay. and insights Mm -hmm. And, you know, my conference is one venue where that can happen. Yeah, okay. There are other venues, yeah. too. Mm -hmm. But if you get involved and prepare yourself mm -hmm. to be involved, people will find that spark within themselves, mm -hmm. and they will stop looking for white knights, and they will start becoming their own white knights. Or, or American knights. American right. knights, right. whatever right. you want, whatever right. you want to call it. Together. I'm just saying. But yeah. my point is that, you know, that's the other thing that I'm, I'm a very strong person about diversity, and, sure. and because we are a melting pot of a, mm -hmm. of a number of ideas, and it's very, very important that we understand that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Uh, okay. What are some of the other highlighted areas that we're getting? We got about another five or ten minutes. I want to okay. make sure we, even though it's redundant, you know, let's, why don't we just reiterate some of the highlights? Of what we will be getting out of this this conference. Well, let's just start with the website. If people okay. want to go to this conference, okay. they can register at westernlibertynetwork.com and hit the register now button. They can also hit, uh, uh, you know, be a sponsor button if they want to do that. Uh, on the website, westernlibertynetwork.org. Yeah, westernlibertynetwork.org. They can also download a full agenda of the event, and they can download study materials if they want to learn Robert's Rules of Order. Uh, they can see everybody who's going to be involved in the conference. Uh, they can see all of the, the classes. And they're going to be able to take 16 courses, or, or they'll be able to choose four of 16 courses on how to impact the legislature, uh, skills that people will need to be successful next year, mm -hmm. skills for candidates, campaign managers, and campaign staff members, and running and building your own grassroots organization. Mm -hmm. uh, during the assemblies, they'll be able to have a good lunch, but also see candidate debates for United States Senate, Oregon Secretary of State, and Governor. The night before, there will be a reception with live music and hot appetizers, just a, a networking opportunity. We'll have a sponsor presentation there, and uh, we'll also have private speech training. People mm -hmm. will be able to sign up for 30-minute uh, slots to get private speech training, and uh, there'll also be an informal Saturday night dinner after the whole thing is over. But mm -hmm. this is going to be a great networking opportunity, a great opportunity to be inspired, to get educated. And we want people to come out of there on fire. We want them to come out ready to, to get involved in the next election cycle and have some sense that they've actually acquired the skills 
that will allow them to be successful. Okay. And again, they can register at westernlibertynetwork.org. Mm -hmm. Now, I take it then that, that uh, you know, you're doing this um, uh, here, here before the final uh, registration for candidates, right? Sure. Before if people want to file, Will you be doing something after that? Oh, we, uh, Western Liberty Network operates around the calendar. Yeah, around the calendar. All the time. Yeah. We, okay. we do, uh, we've got 19 affiliates in Oregon. We do trainings there. We have a, a youth conference in May. Uh, and we do special projects. Like we just got done with a project called the Three Hour Tour, where we taught people who were recently elected to office mm. how to function mm. successfully wow. once they're there. And, you know, we had a lot of fun. It was a Gilligan's Island theme, Three Hour mm -hmm. Tour and mm. all that. I mean... Mm -hmm. It, it, was a, it was a good time, and uh, we have started to do work up in Washington. We have a Washington executive director now and, and uh, four affiliates up there, and we're going to try and duplicate this in other states. Mm -hmm. yeah, let, let's talk a little bit about that youth conference you had. Sure. What, what do you think? What, what, what were some of the, some of the presenters? Or pre what we do, what what we do is do? we encourage high school and college students to actually forego such things as student government and get involved in their community now. Mm -hmm. If they're 18, they can be appointed to any public board, and there are tons of vacancies out there. Mm -hmm. They can even run for office themselves. There's a guy named Kyle Knight in Baker City who received training, and he got elected to the Baker City School Board as an 18-year-old young man. And he wow. uncovered you know, some credit card fraud up there, and it was a big shingding for a while, but he helped to... to uh, Hmm. And some corruption, and it's that's what the the conference is about. The youth conference is about young people learning how to be impactful now, and not wait until some adult tells you you can. Just get involved now. They're eighteen. Uh, sometimes they come; they're much younger than that. You know, they've just got the bug, and they want to mm -hmm. learn how to do things. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've you know typically have sixty to a hundred young people show up, and we have young people actually put on the trainings mm -hmm. you know, through the day, and we have panel discussions, and, mm -hmm. and we have some people come, like Senator Kim Thatcher came mm -hmm. uh, last time, and there were others. Scott Jorgensen, a good friend of mine, he's always been prominent Scott, yep. in these conferences, and he's, uh, he's going to be participating in this one, too, yeah, by the way. Yeah, right, right, right. You know, you know one thing, I'm going to throw something out of here, and tell you, and there, there's, there's definitely a concern another concern of minorities and women. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, we've been in that culture, as a culture. Right. Maybe at some point in time we can get out of that culture, but we got to work at it, right? Sure. Are you encouraging, uh, i.e., uh, engaging or uh, going out and trying to, if you will, get get some of those individuals involved? Well, uh, have you had participants? Maybe I can maybe see if I can motivate I'm try you. I'm trying really hard. Um, you know, some people that I work with have have seen that uh, I've really been trying to get women involved yeah. in these conferences. And I had a meeting earlier this week okay. with the head of a, a Pakistani immigrant group. Okay. And uh, they have an issue where they've got a lot of people who have recently immigrated to the United States or mm -hmm. new citizens, mm -hmm. and they want to know, you know, how to be a part of the melting pot. Mm -hmm. And part of assimilating is getting involved in civic life. Mm -hmm. And so in the spring, I expect to be involved with uh, training, you know, okay, okay, new immigrants okay, okay, how okay. to get involved in American civic okay, life. Okay, okay. You know, it's hard. Uh, you know, every, every human being has sort of the circle of people that they know. Mm -hmm. And reaching out from that circle mm -hmm. is sometimes awkward, sometimes mm -hmm. difficult. And uh, it, it, it can be in a city like Portland. But... Mm -hmm. Definitely giving it a try because, you know, my my parents, actually not my parents, but my grandparents are immigrants, mm -hmm. Germany, mm -hmm. Ireland, Slovakia. Mm -hmm. uh, they all had to go through this. Mm -hmm. uh, we have immigrants now that are going through it. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I want to make clear I'm a big supporter of legal immigration. Right, right. But there are oh, a lot yeah. of legal yeah. immigrants. Yeah that are like, okay, I'm in the United States now. I want to be an American. I'm an American citizen. How do I mm -hmm. well, get into well, the fabric? Well, the whole issue of assimilation is, is still a problem with us. That's right. And, I, and that's another reason why I wanted you to come on, because I see that, that there's some, there's, there might be some roads here, some opportunities, if you will, sure. to solve some of those issues. And I think that's a very well, important Well, if, if I can get well, adequate... Blacks, blacks Hispanics, yeah. Hispanics, because that's where we are right now. Yeah. And that issue, that's big. I'm not, I mean, I'd I'm like not going to come over. I'm not going to sell anything on this show, but I will say that if I'm able to get adequate sponsorship, I plan to, you know, offer some 
blocks of free admissions mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, to various communities. Mm -hmm, you know, for, for mm -hmm. right now I've got to meet a hotel contract, yeah. but uh, if I'm able to do that, I'm not about doing anything other than getting this information yeah, out yeah, right, right, to right, as right, many right, people right, as possible. Right, right. Well, that's, now that's my conservative side of it. They yeah. pay their own way. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's why I'm that's why It's I'm good doing, that everyone has some I'm, skin in the game. Right. That's why I'm doing and the show, do. and yeah. I just want to make sure that, that uh, you welcome their participation. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm going to be there. Yeah, well, I, <laughs> so, I, I hey, think I that's mean, great. It's quite obvious here, and, and, mm -hmm. uh, and so I'd like to so hopefully encourage, uh, if you will, those various communities to be involved, if you will, because that can sort of like uh, sure. Help the assimilation aspect of it, which is very important to us. Sure. Oh, I mean, as, as we, the more we become sophisticated, the more sophisticated we're becoming. Uh, the more it's, it's more of a little, little kind of a, you know, everybody's got to do your own thing. You right. got to be successful in your own right. You've got to go out there and engage. It can't well, be, listen, Bruce. If can't there are social effort, if there are any representatives from various you know groups from minority organizations, uh, I I would be delighted and ecstatic mm -hmm. if they would contact me. Through the Western Liberty Network dot org website. Well, you are doing it through me, through me now. Yeah. Well, that's great. That's one. That's <laughs> they, one channel. If they follow, yep. if they follow. No, that's that's the whole channel right now. <laughs> <laughs> the the channel. I, I mean, the channel right now. I mean, now. if I can open up ten channels, I'll do that that's because right, that's that's, right, that's, that's right, what right, it's about. Right, it's about right. you know um, right. having us take responsibility, and that means right. all Americans. Exactly. Well, the information that you've been you, we've been talking about and, so, and a lot of the issues we've been bringing things on the table, and I think it's very timely. I mean, you know, uh, maybe in, in a lot of folks' mind right now, they, because of the fear factor and this, they're like, hey, folks, it's gonna, we're going to get there. Mm -hmm. This is still America. You yeah. know what I mean? And we still, we're still a good, solid, we've got a good, solid base with reference to diversity across. We, we're Americans. You know, Bruce, I think about the problems we have now, yeah. and I'm thinking, can you imagine what it, would have been, what it would have been like to be alive during the Civil War wow. or World War wow. II when, wow. you know, th you had existential threats? Yeah. Oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> and, you know, that we're here. Um, yes. And so um, I, I, we're going to get past this. Yes, we are. Yes, and we are. It's, it's not going to be D.C. that solves the that, problem that's in right. the end. That's right. that's it's not right. going to be Salem. It's going to be all of us. All of us. You and I and, and everyone else that's maybe looking at this. Mm -hmm. Get involved. You've got to get involved. You've got, and, and I'll make the point again, too. This time around, you will vote. But don't vote because of fear or this, that, and the other. You've got to get engaged so you can understand what the issues are. Mm -hmm. And as you say, it's a responsibility. You're the responsibility. You put them up there. Because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, if these folks are in and they're doing their own thing, guess what? You're responsible because you didn't do what you were supposed to do. You did not. You weren't responsible. So this is going to be just a great deal. I mean, I really appreciate you being here with us. And hopefully after, we, after, you, do, after you do the conference, you come back and we'll do an update. In terms come of back anytime. Would that be okay with you? I'd love to come back. That'd be fine. So yeah. this is this is great. So again, thank you very much for being with us. I think we've run out of town right now, guys. We got any more time here? Are we still okay? Any other any other little thing? Why don't you recite that website again? Yeah, that. WesternLibertyNetwork.org. O R G. Okay. Mm -hmm. What date is this? That's going to be on the 30th of January, with the reception held the night before, the 29th, at the Embassy Suites Hotel in Hillsborough. Right mm -hmm. here, again, Scott. Thank you very much.